Is the Bible historical? Of course it is. I believe it is, but maybe you don't. And, and there's a lot of attacks on the Bible saying, oh yeah, it's uh, it's the Word of God, inspired by the Word of God, but it's not exactly, you know, exactly what happened. And they attack Genesis, the book of Genesis and other places like that, usually with an agenda, right? That's actually a satanic thing to do. We don't want to fall into that whole progressive Christianity type thing. But let's look at the, the presentation on this right here. Is the Bible historical? Yes, it is. In fact, archaeologists, top archaeologists, use the Bible to find places. Did you know that? So there is an important scripture for us today, you guys. There's an important scripture. It's in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now, as they observed the confidence of Peter and John, this is what happened, and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, hmm, they were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Now, as they observed the confidence of Peter and John, that's important. They had confidence. And you, my friend, you can have confidence too. And you do not have to be educated or trained. The Holy Spirit will train you as you read the Bible. Ask God. Say, please teach me, God. As you read the Bible, he will tell you. He will give you the truth. And you'll know because you'll have peace in your heart. When you when you hear things like, you know, like you might have a self com conversation with yourself, right? Your conscience, or you might be hearing outside voices or whatever. The voice of Satan will never bring peace. That's how you know. Because sometimes you're convicted of sin. But there's other conviction, but there's no peace. That's not from God. That could be from your own flesh, from your own mind, or it could be from Satan or Satan's minions if there's no peace there. But if there's peace there, it comes from God. That's very important to remember that. That'll help you discern that, you guys. So, so now as they observe the confidence of Peter and John, right? They recognize them as having been with Jesus. That's the key, you guys, been with Jesus. And here you can see, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. This is Jesus, right? And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. I love that. Don't you love that scripture? It shows you right there that Jesus is the Word. He is the Word of God. He's the truth. He's the light of the world. He's the bread of life. He's the good shepherd that lays his life down for the sheep. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. In other words, he's just outside of time or and in time as well. He is everything and he can do anything. And the Father has given him all power and authority. And it's just an amazing thing. He gives you the authority to preach and to teach the word of God even if you're uneducated, even if you're untrained, and his word is perfect. It's perfect. Yes, there's different translations. They always try and, the, the critics always go to the, well, this translation says this, and it says this, but right here, the original says this. No, translations are just how languages are changing. They're changing all the time, but God's word is perfect. And the good translations are like the ESV, the NASB, uh, King James Version, New King James Version. Those are all great translations. The New Living Translation, um, I recommend you read all of those. Um, stay away from certain translations that like the Passion Bible. I'd be careful with that one. Um, there's a few others you need to be a little bit careful and cautious of. But uh, God's word is perfect, my friend. Hey, if you'd like to see the playlist, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament, doing a whole series on that right now. I think you'll be blessed by it, but click on the playlist right here, my friend. So click on that.